Hello friends, in this video we are going to discuss about the functioning of DVB-C which includes functioning or the operation of DVB-C receiver. So let's begin with the topic. DVB-C basically stands for Digital Video Broadcasting Cable. That means it provides a standard for cable television system for the transmission of digital data transmission of digital audio and digital video signal or combination of the both signal. So basically the digital video broadcasting cable standard is used for transmission of the signal by using a technique that is nothing but MPEG4 and MPEG2 methods. The DVB-C was originated in Europe. Now in this video we are going to talk about the basic functioning of DVB-C. So let's start with it. So first of all, let's understand what are the transmission media that can be used for the transmission of the signal. So first of all, the cable media is very useful for delivering the quality video and latest multimedia features. Most of the time the cables are used for the transmission of the signal. After that, the another media that can be used for the transmission of data is nothing but the fiber optic system, which uses light for the transmission of the signal. Now, the fiber optic provides high speed cable medium with more bandwidth and high quality of the digital video signal. But in case of fiber optic, few issues which related with the packet loss occurs which affects the quality of the video. But it provides high speed transmission of the signal. The next media that can be used for the transmission is nothing but the coaxial medium which is considered as an alternative option for the cable media. Now it is a cost effective for the service provider as compared to fiber optic and it is still a good choice of many service provider only looking to a provide MPEG2 quality digital video. So basically the fiber optic provides high quality video but the cost of installation and cost of maintenance of the fiber optic cables are more as compared to the coaxial cable. So the most of the service provider still uses the transmission media as a coaxial cable. The coaxial cable supports a standard of MPG2 having a good video quality or having a better video quality. Fiber optic is a better choice when provides to the internet, TV and telephone services through a single medium. So whenever we want to provide a multiple services by using only a one single line which includes internet connection, which includes TV connection and if it includes a other telephone connection then we can use a fiber optic cable because in case of fiber optic cable multiple signals are get transmitted by using a single cable so that allows fast transmission speed and also provides higher bandwidth and good quality of the services other than this because of the installation cost and cost of the fiber optic cable the service provider still uses coaxial cable for transmission media now, the development in case of digital video transmission brought new features like digital video recording, then 3D videos and video on demand features and many more features. So these features require more bandwidth basically. So to provide the required performance and the experience by the user. In order to provide a good experience to the user, it is very much important to transmit the signal without any loss and it, it is very much important to provide a good signal quality. And therefore, for that purpose, we require maximum bandwidth or the more bandwidth. So that in order to fulfill this requirement, the service provider required to shift to a required transmission media. The DVB-C transmission system consider all the analog and digital requirement and it is designed to provide the best services with respect to that services. DVB-C2 is upgrade version of DVB-C. As we know, in case of DVB-T, DVB-T2 is an extension of DVB-T and it provides the additional services and features. Similar concept is applicable over here. DVB-C2 that is nothing but the second generation cable system is used as an extension of DVB-C which includes additional services, it includes additional features and definitely the quality and the cost gets affected by this. Now let's move on to the functional block diagram of DVB-C. The figure shows functional block diagram of DVB-C. It includes a source coding and MPEG2 multiplexing block which having a program mux and input to the program mux are from the video encoder, audio encoder and data encoder. Then there is a transport mux whose output is given to a block called as mux adaptation energy 
so block then there is a channel encoder interleaver after interleave the next block is nothing but byte conversion block after that differential coding block is present along with that after that the circuit also includes the baseband shaping network and at the end and digital to analog converter circuit and front end is present so basically the marks channel encoder interleaver then differential coding block quam all this together forms a channel or cable channel adapter and finally the signal is given to the antenna and the block which includes program marks video encoder audio encoder and data encoder along with the transport mark forms source coding and mpge2 multiplexing box now let's discuss this block diagram in detail Now let's consider the first block that is nothing but source coding and MPGE2 multiplexing block which includes video encoder, audio encoder, data encoder along with that two marks are present. So now let's discuss what it performs exactly. So the audio, video and data streams are multiplexed into a MPGE program stream that forms MPGE PS. One or more than one MPGE PS are joined together into MPGE transport stream. Now let's move back to the diagram again. So now in the diagram we can see that the video encoder, audio encoder and data encoder they provides input to the program MUX. Now here the function of MUX is to generalizely the function of MUX is to receive the multiple signals and provide one signal as output. So here the output is given to the transport MUX. So the transport MUX along with some other signal can be used to provide the transport stream. This is basic digital stream which is being transmitted and received at home set top box or relevant integrable decoder. So the output of the transport MUX which is in the form of MPEGTS is actually the signal which is given to the transmitter and receiver of the home set top box. So that is the signal which is get actually transmitted. Now it allows bit rate for the transported MPG to depend upon the number of modulation parameter and it can range from about 6 to 46 or 6 to 64 Mbps. So bit rate is depend upon the value or we can say the modulation parameter and that vary from 6 to 64 Mbps. Now in the cable TV adapter or we can say the cable adapter there are number of blocks present. So the first block no, that is nothing but MUX adaptation and energy disparal block. So here the MPGE TS signal is received as input and it is identified as a sequence of data packet having fixed length. For example, a length generally it consists of 188 bytes. Now with the technique called energy dispersal, the byte sequence is decorrelated. Further, the external encoder is present. The function of external encoder is first level of protection is applied to the transmitted data by using non-binary block code. Now here, the method of read Salomon 204-188 code is used for, the pro for providing first level of protection and it allows the correction up to maximum of 8 wrong byte for each 188 bit package. So here, the first level of protection is provided to the data bit and for that purpose RS method is used. Now the next block is nothing but external interleaver. So the convolution interleaving is used for rearranging the transmitted data sequence. The signal which is transmitted is not in this, if it is not in the sequence form then it is very much important to arrange that in a proper sequence form. So that sequencing is get exactly happen in case of by using the external interleaver. So it becomes more, the signal becomes more stable for long transmission or for long ac operation for the or long sequence of error. Now next is nothing but byte M conversion and it is basically used that is the data bytes are encoded into the multiple M tuplets where M stands for 4, 5, 6, 7 or 8. Next is nothing but differential coding. So in order to get the rotational invariant this unit applied differential encoding of the most two significant byte of each symbol. So to make the digital data stream invariant of the rotation, here the differential encoding is provided to the first two most significant bit of each code. Now next is nothing but QAM mapper as the modulation technique used in the DBM is nothing but uh, quadrature amplitude modulation technique that is QAM. So here QAM mapper block is present. 
the bit sequences map into the baseband digital sequence of the complex symbol and that performs that operation is get performed in case of quam mapper there are five allowed modulation mode and these modulation mode are 16 quam 32 quam 64 quam 128 and 256 quam so depending upon which modulation we require or which in which application we are going to use and which frequency or which bandwidth we require we require to select one of the quam mapper from given quam mapper now next is nothing but baseband shaping so the quam signal is filtered with the help of a cosine shape filter and in order to remove the mutual signal interference at the receiver so basically the baseband shaper is nothing but the filter circuit which is used for filtering operation now next is nothing but d2a and front end the digital signal is required to be transformed into analog form and that function is get performed by using the digital to analog converter and then the signal is modulated to the radio frequency by using the rf front end So this is what about the functioning of or we can say the block diagram description of the DVB-C. Now the receiving STB that means the receiving set top box adopts a technique which are dual to those one used in the transmission. So basically the set top box is used for converting the digital signal into the analog form so that it can be also get compatible with the analog TVs. Now the front end and ADC the first block is nothing but front end and ADC. The analog RF signal which is transmitted from the transmitter are get first converted to a baseband and transform into the digital signal by using the analog to digital converter. Now here the exactly opposite operation of the transmission takes place. So in the transmission we have converted the digital signal into the analog because we want to transmit the signal to the receiver. So at the receiver again in order to process the signal properly we require to convert the signal back into the digital format. Therefore the first block of the receiver consists of ADC which is nothing but analog to digital converter. After conversion the signal is get baseband modulated or we can say the signal is getting get baseband filtering is applied to the signal now again after that in case of transmitter quam modulation and quam wrapper is present so here we are going to use the quam demodulation after that equalization is used and then differential decoding is used so that the encoded signal is get decoded or in case of uh, error signal the error get reduced after that the outer interleaving outer decoding are used which exactly performs opposite function to that of the interleaving and the external interleaving and external encoder performs then mux adaptation is used which performs demultiplexing operation and then mpg to demultiplexing and source decoding takes place after that the programmable stream transport streams are used for obtaining the signal So now let's move back to the basics of uh, VBEC2 which is an extension of VBEC. So now let's see what is VBEC2 provides. So VBEC2 is a digital cable transmission system developed by the DBB project that is digital video broadcasting project and it is considered as a new version or modified version of DBBC. It uses latest modulation and coding technology for providing the proper operation or for proper transmission of the signal the, so that the signal can be transmitted without any loss of data and the signal becomes more error free. Now DVB, DVB-C2 initially used for delivery of the innovative new services which includes video on demand application, then it includes uh, HD TV transmission system, then helping digital operators to remain competitive and also to meet the retransmission requirement that is in longer term migration of current DVB-C into DVB-C2 is also foreseen. So it is may possible that the existing techniques may get compatible with DVB-C2 technique uh, and it is used in the application like video on demand then HD TV transmission signal and many more applications. Now similar to DVB-T standard and DVB-T2 standard here the DVB-C2 is also an extension or we can say a modified version of DVB-C which provides additional features and services so that it can fulfill the requirement of the service provider as well as to user and user can have a new experience of viewing the signals. So they can be optimized for a different network characteristics and the requirement of different services planned for delivery to the cable customers. 
so the additional features and additional services with a new features and new services can be provided to the user by the service provider and therefore it may possible that the dbbc get overcome by dbbc2 so this is what about the functioning of dbbc which includes the transmitter and receiver block in transmitter the multiplexers are used which are used to provide a single signal from the multiplex encoder which includes video data and audio encoder that signal is called as mpeg transmit stream which is further given to the various blocks which include interleaving decoding then qam wrapper and differential encoding for providing security to the system and finally the signal is transmitted at the receiver the exactly opposite process of transmission takes place that means demodulation decoding demultiplexing then qam demodulation all these processes are used so i hope you understand the topic of functioning of dbbc2 so thank you very much for watching this video stay tuned to ikeda subscribe ikeda thank you